Hello, brothers and sisters in YouTube family. Hope you guys are being blessed. Today I had a wonderful time in worship as the Lord played beautiful songs of His love over me and of His embrace. I love to sing in worship. But this morning, I felt the Lord just wanted me to receive His love as I felt like a pile of mush in the chair melted by His love and so lavishly loved by Him. However, it was cut short because we had to go to our community Lord's Supper. It was wonderful. After we were done, I hurried back to home to do exactly what he's been asking me to do. Wait on him and sit to hear his heart. On the way back to my place, I checked my phone and received a message from a soul who I've been praying for for now about three years. He is called to help with the community in Ghana. I thought we had some breakthrough. When Blessed Mother told me to share the mission with him and have him join our intercessor group so he could see the vision and the website of this call, because the Lord had initially given the vision of the city of God to him. However, upon answering the call to come to the community, our friendship was severed with all my other friendships. So I didn't think he would respond to it at all. But he did and joined us. Then he said he would help. After seeing the website, meeting the group, and seeing the vision come to life, I was so elated and amazed that the Lord had finally answered my prayer because I had been so disappointed so many times before. I sent him an email with all the messages and details concerning the mission in hopes it would inspire him even further, as I've been excitingly waiting for his response. On my way back, he finally responded that he didn't want to be involved anymore and would refer his friend to help us instead. I thought, what? I felt so disappointed yet again. Then I got a rainbow once I arrived at our place, and it read, if your path is more difficult strewn with those who have become captives to fear of deception, it is because of your high calling. Press in. I realized the rainbow was about him, as arrows of rejection hit my heart, because I poured out the Lord's heart to him with this mission, and was hurt that he still feels I'm deceived. Then the next rainbow card said, Do not become too uneasy in the hour of trial, but try to bear everything with love. Jesus will be favorable towards you and will grant you the grace to lead a totally heavenly life, and nothing will be able to separate you from his love. Jesus is always with you. Rest sweetly in his heart like a child in a mother's arms. After reading that, I tried to tell myself not to be discouraged, to trust the Lord that would all work out in the end like he said, and I need to have faith. But I couldn't fight this keen sense of rejection and pain in my heart as I stared at the Lord in the Eucharist. I could feel the tears welling up in my eyes, and I was surprised how I took the news. I just began to cry, feeling so weary in my prayers for the soul, and feeling hurt that they felt I was still deceived. I don't want to get my emotions to get in the way of what the Lord is trying to say, and it was a busy day in the community with our phones going off, walkies going off, and I didn't want to give up in trying to hear from Him, because there was no silence to be found. But I knew He said for me to try, so I went outside to sit for a while and see if the Lord had something to say. I came before him saying, Hello, Lord. Jesus, what's on your heart? I'm so sorry. I feel so distracted with the noise and with my feelings, Lord. It's a busy day in the community. And Jesus immediately responded, But not so busy in your heart. Thank you for waiting on me, beloved, and pressing in to hear from me. Come, my little one. I am truly carrying you as I hold you so tenderly in my arms. In my embrace is all that you need to move forward, to be strengthened to do my will, and courage to move forward. Thank you, Lord, for holding me, consoling me, and encouraging me. Jesus began, Many of you need to rest in my embrace like this little one. So many times you seek to squirm and jump out of my arms in a hurry to get things done, in your pride to do things your way, and in your strength when you're broken, tired, and bleeding. It's like a child who falls and breaks their arm, and after a few moments of crying in pain in their mother's arms, they think they're okay, just to get up and damage their arm even more. Many of you are not okay, yet you resist resting in me, because you find it unproductive, which is the lie of the enemy. Do you know in my presence angels minister to you? And that is when I do my greatest work? Healing, restoring, and strengthening your heart, my beloved ones. This month is not only a month of testing for her, but for all my beloved brides, and I want to hold you and carry you through this hour of trial, that you may trust in me despite what happens, that I am in control and that I am good. 
So many of you heart dolls are surrounded by those around you who fear deception. They may smile on your face, but deep within they believe you have been deceived. Because far too many of my people fear what they do not understand, and fear what they do not know. They have allowed men to sharpen their minds and hearts, and not my own words in the Gospels. Because if they did, they would follow me too. However, no need to be discouraged by your loved ones and friends who still scorn you and my teachings, because I use it all to perfect you in love and to bear all things with patience for my sake. Remember, if it wasn't for my grace, you too would be on the other side of that fence. You too would be in a prison of fear guarded by the visionaries and teachers of the church who have taught so many error. As an aside here, he's referencing to Rick Joyner's book, The Call, where he showed him majority of Christians are in prison but they don't realize they are in one, and the guards of the prison were teachers of the church who taught error. He was sent to get a young boy out by the name of Stephen, who could see beyond the facade and follow truth, so he was able to climb the mountain with the rejoiner to escape so that he could also free others. Jesus continued, The Father has to draw them, my beloved little ones, and in his timing, he will. He will draw all of them, your spouses, your children, your loved ones, and your friends, for he wishes not one to perish. So don't be discouraged, despondent over the rejection you continue to face in my church and with your loved ones. Remember, it is not you they're rejecting, but me. It grieves my heart more than you can imagine, but I alone know how the soul is fashioned and formed. I alone know how to woo that soul with my love. When you bear with patience the rejection, scorn and contempt you face from those who fear being deceived, much grace is released upon them to eventually respond to this intimacy with me. Many envy you all and can't seem to grasp the idea that I am this vulnerable, this approachable, and this available to them. You have been taught by the world to earn many things, and even in my church, Satan has twisted many perceptions that you also have to earn my love, and many others have been taught of my majesty, my reverence, and my power, which is sought after, but not my heart which is still very broken, hurting, and needy. I created you to be loved by me, and I was begun by the Father to need this love. We need your love. Does that surprise you, my little ones? So many stand at a distance because they fear me, fear intimacy, and fear being deceived because they lack confidence in my goodness. Don't fret, my little one. This soul will come around, just as I've promised, and even he will teach others to draw near to me in intimacy. He'll be the father in this community, but it will take time. Don't start praying. The time is very near. For the rest of you, my beloved brides, come and rest in my embrace. Let me carry through this hour of trial. That was the end of Jesus' message. Thank you so much for your patience and still staying with this channel. Amidst the censorship we've been receiving, the Lord mentioned that months ago this channel would come under attack and eventually take it down. I would always question that message, when within weeks of posting it, nothing happened. But Jesus is always right, even in the midst of our doubts. And he's faithful to warn us. I just love me some him. However, now to serious business. We have one strike left to be given to us until the channel is permanently removed. They took down the message about Biden being Absalom and Mother Claire's message about the nation's drama, which exposed what the deep state government is doing and what is going on. That is where my second strike came from, just a week and a half apart from the first strike. This censorship has gone so bad. It's not about being anti-Trump, but it's simply anti-Christian as well. So with that said, we're working on creating a Rumble channel called Hot Drill is Ghana. Rumble.com is a new and upcoming um, outlet like YouTube, but for conservatives, and was recommended by Mother Claire. So please stay with us by liking and following our Facebook page to get updates and whereabouts about the new channel once this is taken down. I don't know how much time we have, so please stay with us and follow us. Also, this is an attack against the work of the City of God community. The enemy had them put a strike on the account the week I was to share all the videos with you guys. Once again, it lets us know we're doing something right. God is still faithful. In the two weeks with the channel down, received donations coming in. Wow. Thank you for all who continue to donate. There's so much work ahead of us, and every dollar counts. Anything you can give is so helpful. I have our PayPal link below for those who want to donate. And once the website is done, we'll be doing a GoFundMe campaign to continue to raise funds. Thank you for your support and prayers. Love you all dearly. And I bless you now in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. God bless you guys until the next message.